Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for Wednesday, October 21st. We're talking about truth and um, I should probably be honest about <laughs> these videos. I'm sure everyone knows I record them in advance, but um, if you're watching this on the 21st, then presumably I am uh, in Maharashtra. I have traveled a little bit, um, taking into account the risks that that entails, but um, being as safe as possible. So I've recorded this in advance, clearly. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about truth in government uh, for a bit. I, I think that I think that there are a few angles for looking at the difficulties um, with truth in government. Uh, there are situations where governments tend to seem convinced that secrecy is very important. You find this in the case of national security and things like that, where secrecy is utmost. Um, even from the country's own citizens. And then there is the whole spectrum of personalities in leadership positions and what those personalities feel on an individual level about transparency, um, how willing is a leader to take unscripted questions, manage a town hall, have conversations with citizens, and how often does the leader seem to bend the truth for the sake of perception or um, some desire to seem more likable. And then systematically at, a, at an institutional level, these individuals, whether they're public personalities, whether they're sort of icon, like a prime minister or a president, um, or whether they're somewhere behind the scenes, a person's personality put in a position of power in government will influence the government's belief structure, collective belief structure regarding transparency. And truth in government really weighs in a lot on how society behaves, how the individuals within the society behave and how government itself moves forward. So government is, I mean, <laughs> from, you know, the smallest form of government, like a, a condo board or um, class president or something like that. If you had that in your elementary or high school, um, these shapes of government, they are, they are imaginary, right? It is our collective imagination which sort of brings this thing into being. So um, in my high school, we had a student representative council and the idea that those people um, constitute something only exists in the minds of the, the SRC themselves, the represent, <laughs> um, student council, um, and the student body and the, the teachers um, and administration who agree, that, yes, the student council, they exist and they mean something, and their decisions mean something. And 
So when the imagination of all the individuals involved matters so much, then it really matters what the imagination of each individual contains with respect to uh, the collective opinion on any topic. And transparency is no different. And in some ways, transparency is a sort of kind of special self-referential category <laughs> where um, if, your, if your student council believes in secrecy and hiding and the value of not releasing information um, on an individual level, obviously they would have to, to agree to it collectively, um, but then collectively also. You, you will end up with a fragile institution, right? If the other students and the teachers and the administration of the school do not trust that the student council is actually representing themselves honestly, that they're hiding information on purpose, then it will, over time, erode the faith that the teachers and the administration and the other students have in the student council. And in the case of a student council, it may just dissolve or the teachers might just say one day, well, this is no longer a valid institution. We're getting rid of the student council and there won't be one next year. Um, democracy tends not to work like that. Government tends not to work like that. We don't have some <laughs> some chaperone right, for our our governments. Um, democracy is self-chaperoning at best. Um, and it is the case that this same sort of erosion will occur. And as it occurs, the individuals involved um, will kind of feed off of the collective opinion and an idea of what transparency should look like, what honesty should look like. And they themselves will change and the next generation will change. And you get this cycle of individuals affecting individuals, but also collectives affecting future collectives and future individuals and vice versa. And it seems as though um, there's always been a kind of comedic take on governments and politicians. Um, I think certainly in the United States and India, there, there is this generally accepted position of just, <laughs> I, I don't trust politicians. I mean, politician, uh, politicians are basically used cars salesmen. It doesn't matter which political party they belong to. It doesn't matter what they say. You shouldn't believe anything they say. They're all liars. Um, and it's almost as if that goofy caricature of politics, the cartoon that you see, the political, they're always not funny the political cartoon that's in the newspaper has become politics. And in no one place, right? Every country in the world seems to be suffering this to some degree. Um, and there are these emergent personalities, some of them much more dangerous than others, um, some of them much more vocal than others. and some of them uh, much more difficult to calculate about. Um, so if you look at the, the loud personalities or the obviously dangerous personalities, it's easy for us to reason about them. It may be unpleasant, but it's easy to say, oh, okay, this is a bad situation. We should do something to fix this. But underneath, the skin of dishonesty there is uh there's threads right of dishonesty which are they're infecting the 
the minds and the rationale and the philosophy of people who would otherwise try to be honest. And it seems like there's a moment in time right now where there's a sort of collective sinking. <laughs> and as governments to various degrees are struggling to maintain even a semblance of rationality. Um, and that dishonesty uh, is surfacing in a way where it's, it's acceptable for it to be blatant, coarse-grained, um, and there's a, a mistaken ideal, I don't know if you would call it an ideal, um, a sense that if something blatantly dishonest, blatantly evil, is at least out on the surface, <laughs> that's more honest. That's more honest than the newspaper political cartoon of, oh, there are these, these evil politicians hiding in a back room and making these um, top-down decisions which affect the world. Like, better that it's out there. And, I mean, if that were really how the world worked, um, the, the political cartoon version uh, maybe that would actually be true, but uh, a rational person knows that that is not how humanity operates. There's no secret society somewhere or in any one country running things behind the scenes. Um, there are certainly things which happen behind the scenes, but transparency comes whether people want it or not. And in particular, those who don't want transparency always tend to be revealed sooner or later. Um, if it's later, society tends to be surprised. So if the United States government did something really terrible in the 60s, and then at some point the CIA just says, meh, we don't care anymore. <laughs> Here are the documents on all these terrible things that we did, right? I mean, it was the previous generation of um, agents, and I mean that in the general sense, not CIA agents, but just people with agency um, who did something wrong. It's, it's often uh, the case that even if the specific fact is surprising, that the revelation is not that surprising. It's kind of like, well, okay, yeah, we sort of knew that the CIA was doing something bad um, back in the 60s and even through the 60s and 70s people might have thought it to be a conspiracy but now that we know well okay <laughs> that seems about right um, the CIA they don't seem to be very trustworthy um, speaking of agencies shrouded in secrecy um, I just this is smart right bad mouthing the CIA in a YouTube video that <laughs> Even if only three people watch it, somebody's listening to this. Um, what is non-obvious is that there is no high-level cure for dishonesty. There is no top-down resolution. There's no law you can pass and say, oh, okay, now from here on out, no more secret societies, no more dishonest politicians, no more secretive national defense things will be as open and honest and transparent as we can. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do. You can only really change individuals. You can then change systems and structures which those individuals participate in. So, I mean, blatant lies, you can make them more illegal. If you are a politician and you tell dangerous lies um, that endanger the population who have hired you for the job, then maybe you go to jail for doing something really dangerous, really wrong, really incorrect, um, especially knowingly. 
but that only goes so far. Um, and then the government needs to pick up tools which are inherently transparent. So there are transparent technologies. There are transparent laws. We could certainly make the tax code more transparent. Um, all of this is actually kind of, it's two things, right? On one side, you have the individual, you have the individual politician or the individual citizen or the individual teacher or the individual banker, whoever they are, and their capacity for transparency, their capacity for honesty, and how much they're changing. Are they actually bothering to grow? Because we all know that we're flawed in this regard. We know that we are not capable of perfect honesty all the time, but is it even in our interest? Is it even something we're pursuing to grow our ability to be honest? And it is a constant lifelong pursuit to be more honest, to be more effective within the field of honesty. Um, are we trying or are we just accepting, oh yeah, I was born this way, however I am, and I'm stuck. <laughs> My whole life I'll just be this kind of teacher or this kind of banker or this kind of politician or whatever. That honest, that much honest. Um, then, on the other hand, we have these structures, right? These systems. Systematic honesty or systematic dishonesty, and it reinforces itself. And this is actually a design problem. So when we look at honesty, let's say the tax code, right? How easy is it for you to do your taxes? Because the transaction at a very high level is honest. <laughs> Nobody's under any misconceptions about how income tax works or corporate tax. Okay, yes, the government deserves a certain percentage of whatever income there has been. I mean, I read a tweet today, actually, as coincidentally. Um, revenue for individuals, profits for corporations, which when I read that tweet, I thought, oh, yeah, that is weird, right? Um, but, <laughs> I mean, I think we can all think of reasons why that's the case, but the high-level transaction of a government or a king or a queen or whatever taking taxes to support the kingdom or, is it called a queendom, if it's just a queen, um, the monarchy, uh, the country, the province, the city, whatever the space in which government operates, um, whatever kind of government that happens to be, everyone agrees that this is the transaction. But the details of the transaction are so complicated. And that is where the transparency really matters. And so you could say, well, okay, we could design a better process. We could design better laws. This is a design problem. And when you come at it from the outside, you can say, oh, okay, it's this easy to understand. It's less than one sheet of paper, or it's more. Um, I can explain it to a 10-year-old, or I can't. And that sort of honesty will feed back on itself, and future generations will learn the value of transparency and honesty through these things. There are all sorts of other spaces um, where, uh, where this can really take root, right? Particularly in business, um, but throughout all human endeavor. But in terms of actually choosing an actionable thing that you can do 
immediately. Uh, the only thing that I really know is meditation I, at an individual level. I mean, I guess there are, <laughs> there are other forms of honesty, right? You can, at an individual level, you can choose to use only free software like Libra software, open source software. Um, and maybe that will have some effect, but probably not mostly. I, it, it's a nice idea, but um, these sorts of external changes in honesty uh, tend to place too much value on our own individual sense of agency. Um, whether I use Linux or whether I use a Mac is probably not relevant to society. I'm not, it's not going to be uh, a significant change. If an entire government adopts free and open source software or an entire education institution or an entire corporation, uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> then there'll be some changes. But how to get there? Because a government, a corporation, this is a collection of individuals and the individuals themselves need to change and work toward honesty. Every day, it's exhausting. Well, it's not exhausting, but it's tiresome. <laughs> and it's boring. Um, but it's worthwhile. I mean, when you're four years old, brushing your teeth is tiresome and boring, but you get used to doing it by default. And you understand the value of it when you lose your first adult tooth and know that you'll never get it back. Um, there are certain chores in life that we just have to kind of accept and um, our work toward honesty to engendering honesty within ourselves can be one of those chores. And eventually it will actually propagate upward to the highest levels of government um, because our governments are only comprised of individuals, uh, whether those are the voting citizenry or the individual politicians themselves. So I hope to see that happen, or at least begin within my lifetime. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, that's probably enough for today on governments and how Anapana meditation is going to change governments. I'm not sure how many people listening to this believe such a thing like that. I think it's probably more likely if people take Vipassana courses and see the sort of influence it can have um, that people will appreciate uh, how that can actually influence individuals, individual choice, um, and the consequences thereof. But time will tell. Um, I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves, regardless of which government you happen to be under right now, and taking good care of everyone around you. And uh, I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.